Most COVID-19 restrictions in Nigeria have been lifted. Masks are no longer mandatory, and COVID-19 tests for some travelers have been dropped with effect from yesterday. Professor Tomori, a Nigerian professor of virology and also a member of the World Health Organization's Technical Advisory Group on COVID-19 vaccine composition, he joins us now to assess Nigeria's COVID responses after relaxation of the protocols by the federal government. We'd like to say welcome to Newsday and thank you for joining us. Professor Tomori, uh, let's talk about the relaxation of the COVID restrictions worldwide. Is this the retreat of COVID-19? Are we seeing the end of it or is this, um, is this something else? I, I, uh, thank you very much. I, I think COVID-19 is the one that is going on recess, but I expect it's going to boom back. You remember what is happening in China now? China is locking down. Some of the figures are rising in other parts of the world where we have relaxed. Uh, we may be tired of COVID-19, but COVID-19 is not tired of us yet. And if there's a relapse on his side, I think it's just we have to be very careful uh, not to throw everything back into the woods and say this is the end. It is not the end. We are still reporting cases in Nigeria. Cases are still being reported all over the world. And so I think it would be unwise on, on of us to totally throw out all the uh, precautions we are taking. Yeah, we need to amend, but it doesn't mean that we throw everything out. And like I said, we are seeing what is happening in China. We are seeing what is happening in other parts of the world. The cases are coming up and are rising. Well, so far, only about 3% of Nigeria's population has received a full course of vaccine against COVID-19, which is small even compared with other African countries. How can we boost the country's vaccination drive, especially now that restrictions have been lifted? I think the message we need to get out the fact that COVID is still around. And, not, and see even countries that have done well with vaccination, they are still getting COVID. So how much less those of us who have very few people vaccinated? There are a lot of vulnerable people still in the country. The virus is still in different parts of the world. I think one great lesson you and I can learn is the case of polio. You remember Africa, most countries have been declared free of polio, except two countries. Afghanistan and Pakistan. And only about a few months ago, Malawi got a case of polio from one of those countries. So if once the disease is in any part of the world, no part of the world is safe. And we should, and that's the more the reason why we should continue to get ourselves vaccinated and prepared because so that we're not that vulnerable. Uh, it's just easy. One case comes in and we relax our entry uh, qualification and things of that nature, then when it, we, we could be in, in some kind of trouble. I think we need also to bring down the issue of COVID to the individual level. It is you, it is me that will get COVID, not any other person. Therefore, I should be the one that protect myself. The issue of vaccination is very important. Those who have been vaccinated have a, a smaller chance of getting infected. Even if they get infected, they have a much smaller chance of getting hospitalized or having a serious disease. Therefore, get vaccinated. COVID is still around. Once it's in any part of the world, for your own safety, and for my own safety. All right, you're talking about our safety generally, but some are kicking against the new policy review because it says despite the policy review, fully vaccinated travelers are still being made to pay for COVID-19 tests. And the data actually came out yesterday, and we saw some of these testing labs actually generating billions of Naira over the course of the last one year. Well, again, let's go back to what happens in other parts of the world where things are better organized. Uh, that's why, for example, in Nigeria, if you are fully vaccinated, any part of the world, you don't do any more tests. And that's the way it should be. But if you are not fully vaccinated, you are a danger to the people because you can carry the disease. And therefore, we need to continue testing. But what is happening with us in Nigeria is that people are trying to bend the rules. How many of the people who pay for it actually do the testing? And that's what we should be addressing not whether some people are raking money. Of course, I know there are a lot of money is being paid, but are people actually doing the testing? Are the labs doing the test for which they are, they've gotten money for? That's what we should be looking at. And Europe and other people have said, okay, don't test by PCR, but they have alternatives. So we should also consider the use of alternatives at a much lower cost to the person that is coming in. 
If you are traveling out to, to Britain now, you don't need to do your PCR test. If you are coming to Nigeria, they still say do PCR test if you are not being vaccinated. And I support that one because we don't have the... We, when, we are comp, when we are looking at the issue of these diseases, you don't take what is happening in Britain as the same thing because the epidemiology is different. The situation is different. You should look at your own problem, your own situation, before you take a decision. So testing should still continue, but there are alternatives to the PCR. And I think we should consider that for the sake of the people. What could be the reasons as the drop of numbers in COVID-19 cases? Obviously, that's why uh, restrictions are being uh, uh, released and loosened worldwide. What could be the reasons why it seems that these numbers are dropping? There are two, two major reasons. One, the more the disease has been around, many more people have infected. So, you know, the cases are, I mean, that's what happens. I mean, some of the studies have been done when people have checked for what you call antibodies. The, the first test we did in Nigeria, after the first wave, only about 20% of the people had antibodies or evidence of protection or infection. By the, the second wave, the number went up to 40. In a recent study that we just done after the third wave, the number has gone up to about 70. So people will get infected and then develop some immunity. The only problem with the test we are using is that we, do, we, we don't know whether the fact that I have that Im, uh, immunity or antibody means that it is protective. So there's still another stage of testing. But having said that, many people are getting infected. The numbers are going down. But secondly, many, many people are no longer testing. Many countries are no longer testing. Take our country, for example. Look at what is happening. We have 140 labs. But if you go to NCDC website, you'll find a list of 40, 50 laboratories that have stopped testing for one reason or the other. Or they are testing or they are not reporting because people have got tired of, you know, of, of testing. And I think and then many of the states are not even supporting the testing because they're not, uh, you know, either not funding the laboratories well, they're not paying the staff, and that's why the number has gone down. And if you look at the numbers we're getting, you'll find it's only by three or four states reporting when you have 36 states. So, of course, the number will go down because of what we, uh, the, the way, uh, rate of testing. So it's a combination of both. More people are getting infected, and therefore the number is, is going down. Secondly, we are not even testing as much as we used to test before. And if you look at the numbers of tests that the NCDC puts up, the number keeps dropping. So the, when you test less, of course, you find less positive. That's what is happening. Well, virologist Professor Oyewale Tomori, thank you so much for joining us on Newsday.